And he has been a graduate of King High School Ooh. and has worked at many, many schools in this valley. So he probably knows more about this place than any of us. <laughs> but he is known to be passionate about students, passionate about history, and passionate about assisting teachers to improve their practice. He's taught for 17 years, and his classroom is considered to be a sacred place. And he is optimistic about the future of public education. And I don't really want to put him on the spot too much, but I'm pretty sure he could tell you the sad event that happened in America yesterday, 149 years ago. Please join me welcoming Ron Napolito. I think the sad event that uh, Mr. Backer is referring to is the assassination of President Lincoln. Uh, I wore my Lincoln tie uh, in honor of that event and a great American. Um, Dr. Winger uh, referenced the selfie earlier, and um, I had to admit I got a little starstruck earlier out in the main lobby area. Um, I turned to my wife and I said, I think that's Tom Torlinson. I think that's the state superintendent of public instruction, Tom Torlickson. And I was this close to pulling my phone out and asking Mr. Torlickson if we could have a selfie together. <laughs> I couldn't quite summon the courage at that time. I was a little nervous, wanted to make sure that the speech goes okay tonight. So, Mr. Torlickson, if you're available afterward. <laughs> uh, thank you. And I'll make sure to tag you on Twitter as well. <laughs> um, before I begin and before I forget, I wanted to uh, first thank those of you who support and put up with us as teachers. The spouses, the partners, and significant others, the children and grandchildren, the friends, the confidants, the shoulders to cry on when this profession gets difficult. To our support network, thank you. Specifically, I want to say thank you to my lovely wife, Heather, uh, my daughter, Libby, uh, and to the man who was one of the reasons I got into education. He was my ASB advisor at Canyon High School. He's my boss now at West Ranch, Bob Vincent, who is retiring this year after 38 years in education. So uh, this is, after all, the 30th year, the 30th anniversary of the SCB Education Foundation uh, Teacher Tribute. and. Uh, so I was asked this evening to recognize some of the changes that have occurred over the past 30 years of education. Um, I went to Soledad Canyon Elementary School. My, uh, my sixth grade classroom is now theater number six of the uh, Edwards Canyon Country Cinemas. <laughs> I think the person yelling out there is Angie Buchanan, who lived across the street from me. She, she was not, just a few years older than I was, and she babysat me when she was a student at Canyon, and I was a, a little one. So, uh, so Soledad Canyon Elementary School, Sierra Vista Junior High School, Canyon High School. Um, and so I, since I've, I've been, I've, I'm a product of this valley, I decided to ask some of my friends, especially some of my Santa Clarita Valley friends, um, what do you remember about education in the past 30 years? Um, I love technology, so I especially wanted to hear about, like, technology of the past 30 years. So um, I heard about the mimeograph machine, which I, I remember, I don't have many memories of because I was little, but I remember the smell of the duplicate code. Um, and, I, and something about purple handouts as well. Um, the old reel-to-reel -reel movie projectors, which I, I was one of the, the students that was trained to kind of feed that, that uh, the, the, the movie through. Um, SRA reading labs, typewriters, I actually learned how to type on a real typewriter. Um, chalkboards, erasers, I didn't know the name of it, it's called the chalk chuck. It's the little silver oh, yeah. thing that holds the chalk so your hand doesn't get uh, chalky. <laughs> Record players, tape players, Ellison die cut machines, which actually I think are still in a lot of our schools. Um, VCRs, film strip projectors. Remember with the beep to advance with the narration on the cassette? And then you'd have a kid turn it. And, um, I got to be that kid, I was pretty excited. Um, the easy grader. So it was that green and white sliding thing. You had like a test out of 25 and you could slide it over and okay, what percentage is a 19 out of 25? Um, the smoking section in high school, someone said. Uh, they remember that fondly from, from back in the day. Um, a hard punch machine and a 10 key adding machine. 
That's one of my older Facebook friends. Um, one, of, one of my special memories is the old Apple IIe machines playing, uh, playing uh, I remember Logo, uh, with the, drawing little circles with Logo. So in spite of all the change that's around us, and we're experiencing, gosh, a lot of change right now, technological change, iPads in the classroom, um, Chromebooks, smart boards, teacher websites, classroom blogs, and, and Skyping with classrooms all over the world, um, there's some things that are timeless. The Ellison die cut machine, for example, clearly timeless. Um, I was, uh, I got a message from my friend Laura Aerosmith. She also teaches at West Ranch. She's the teacher that I hope to be like when I grow up. Um, she said the great Gatsby. She said that she read Gatsby when she was in high school back in the 1980s, and now her son, who is a high school junior, is reading Gatsby as well. Um, so some books, some lessons are timeless. Another thing that is timeless, I think the most important thing that is timeless in education is good teaching. Um, I love social media, as, as many of my friends know. So again, I, I put it out to my Facebook friends. This was just a couple of days ago. I really didn't have this speech done um, earlier this week. And, uh, <laughs> and so I asked them to recall a teacher from the Santa Clarita Valley that made a positive impact on their life. Uh, and I got about 100 responses in two days. I, I whittled it down. Uh, I think I narrowed it down to 11. Um, he ignited a fire in his students and challenged us to think outside of our own little world. She looked beyond my eccentricities and encouraged talents I was not aware I had. This teacher taught what it meant to be responsible, honorable, and have a strong work ethic, all while having a great time. Beautiful man. He made chemistry fun. Loved that I could go and talk to him whenever I wanted to. My algebra teacher at Sitco in eighth grade is one of the main reasons I am a teacher today. He taught me more than just algebra, but the art of laughing at yourself and making each day simply as fun as possible. She taught me to write, to love reading even more than I already did, and to smile whenever possible. She put me out of my misery the first time I found out how bad my public speaking anxiety was, <laughs> and then coached me through my first successful speech, even allowing me to bring my pet chickens to class <laughs> as moral support and visual aids. <laughs> this is one of my former students uh, who is now in college. Um, she said this about her mother. Although I was never a student in her classroom, I grew up being surrounded by her passion for education. Being able to see her grow from a teacher in the Saugus School District to an assistant principal and to a principal, while still being a wonderful mother, is truly inspiring. She is the most positive and uplifting person I know. Her passion for education can be seen by everyone, and she truly cares about each and every one of her students and faculty members. And in fact, that's Mrs. soon-to-be Dr. De Armas, who's in the audience this evening. <laughs> couple more quick stories. For me, it was my art teacher at Bowman High School. Growing up, all my teachers said my art was wrong, and she realized that I was an abstract artist and helped me really embrace my art and take it to another level. She would go behind my back and enter my art in contests and always brought me back a blue ribbon. She even got me a scholarship to CalArts. She was amazing, sweet, kind, and supportive. Art was an outlet for me, but I gave up after so many years of being made fun of, and she taught me to love my differences. Valley View, 1985. This teacher had a huge heart and was always able to make me smile, especially since my parents were going through a divorce. He was an amazing teacher and I will never forget him. Two more. She made me excited about science and how the body works. She and her class started me down the path, down the path to become a registered nurse. Today, with 10 years of experience in ER and OR, I am working in nursing administration. Never underestimate the work you do as a teacher. You shape lives every day. And finally, she is a creative kindergarten teacher at Pine Tree. My niece is in her class and comes home from school every day so excited about what she learned. Polar bears, caterpillars, and farm animals. And that's actually Gay Evans, who is one of our families. <laughs> so I ask you now to take a moment. Who is it for you? Which teacher or teachers were your inspiration for you? Who helped you to dream bigger than anything you ever thought possible? Uh, the Israeli teacher, psychologist, and author uh, Chaim Ginot said this, I've come to a frightening conclusion that I am the decisive element in the classroom. It's my personal approach that creates the climate. It's my daily mood that makes the weather. As a teacher, I possess a tremendous power to make a child's life miserable or joyous. I can be a tool of torture 
or an instrument of inspiration. I can humiliate or heal. In all situations, it is my response that decides whether a crisis will be escalated or de-escalated and a child humanized or dehumanized. I, I struggled in a way to, to put this all together, all of these thoughts together, because I had so many good teachers when I was growing up. I had to narrow it down to just one I wanted to tell my final story about, it, and that was Jerry Burrell. He was my math teacher in ninth and 10th grade at Canyon High School. And he said this back in the fall of 1988. Doggone it, it's 26 years later, and it still sticks with me. He said, you know, your life is a lot like driving a car. He spoke in, in metaphors a lot of times. Um, he says, you, you, have, you have a couple of choices when you're driving a car. You can look at the road three feet in front of you, or five or six feet in front of you, or you can look at the horizon. And if you only ever look at what's right in front of you, that's all you're ever going to see. This is your field of vision right here. But if you can look to the horizon when you're driving, then you can see everything. Your peripheral vision opens up. And life is like that. As teachers, we help our children to focus not simply on the road three feet in front of us, or three days or three weeks or even three years in front of us, but to focus on the horizon. And we prepare them to not only be successful adults in college or career, but even more importantly, to be good human beings, good citizens and lifelong learners. On behalf of all of us in this room today, thank you to our teachers of the past. And on behalf of parents like myself, thank you teachers for caring so much for our children. Thank you.